Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's that uh, the bullet point 21, committing outrageous uh, outrages upon personal dignity, in particular humiliating and degrading treatment. Oh. <laughs> Committing rape, sexual slavery, and forced prostitution, forced pregnancy, as defined in Article 7, Paragraph 2. Mm -hmm. Enforced sterilization or any other form of sexual violence uh, constituting a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> and then utilizing the presence of a civilian or other protected person to render certain points, areas, or military forces immune from military operations. <laughs> Now, this personal dignity, in particular, humiliating and degrading treatment, oh, you know, after a million eight hundred thousand emails, yes, it is somewhat humiliating. I mean, I'm that homeless, mentally ill man that you told law enforcement that he doesn't understand. But I did think that these actual RCWs... <laughs> The RCWs of the state that require that you give actual notice of court hearings. <laughs> there was one remedy available to me. If I don't like it, I can motion the court where I thought when I informed you of civil rights violation, you, as law enforcement, <laughs> were obligated to enforce my rights as a citizen of the United States. Now, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that it's very humiliating to get served in a public library where all the patrons have to see it. Pooch. <laughs> Then when I got pissed on and you thought it was a, a practical joke, yes. And, and then you use my sister in an image holding Legina, the daughter that I want to adopt, and you won't prosecute Mike Van Proyen for exploiting his adopted daughter. <clears throat> you know, there's been a lot of humiliating, embarrassing, tormenting, and torturing experiences that I've had as a citizen. Yes. <laughs> Where it seemed to me that you were getting paid because of the amount of wealth that I'm worth, and you thought, well, we'll make up crimes, <laughs> but we won't constitute what the actual crime is. We'll just say it's a two-count criminal complaint. Which we won't admit any evidence in his behalf because we won't answer the criminal complaint, <laughs> and we'll just put the guy away in a mental institution so his relatives can save him, and then they can pay everybody for the corruption. Ooch. Well, isn't that what you're doing? You're making up bogus crimes where I have documented I wasn't there. Yes. I didn't email anybody in the Brennan School District. Yes. You took my sons without any due process. Yes. You're doing all this because I'm actually very wealthy and you refuse. Now, in an international criminal court, when the police, the sheriffs, uh, those in politics... <laughs> Keep paying, come to find out, keep paying and keep paying and keep paying to obstruct my rights. I'm thinking you can actually get convicted of war crimes. Ouch. Now, uh, in case of armed conflict and not an international character, serious violations of Article 3, common to and uh, for Geneva Conventions, um, the or the combat, uh, violence to life and person, in particular murder of all kinds, mutilation and treatment and torture. Mm -hmm committing outrages against the personal dignity of American civilians, Ooch. humiliating and degrading treatment. Ooch. Oh my gosh, the passing of sentences and the carrying out of executions without previous... Ooh. Oh, aren't you going to pass sentence on me? Yes. <laughs> Taking of hostages. Ooch. Where are my sons? Did the unite... Well, you took them without any due process. Uh huh. Now, uh... Ooh. Yeah, statement of jurisdiction required Article 12. Now, the prosecutor may seek a ruling from the court regarding a question of jurisdiction or admiss admissibility. Yes. <laughs> In proceeding with respect to jurisdiction or admissibility, those who have referred uh, the situation under Article 13 <laughs> as well as victims and may submit uh, observations to the court. Now, <laughs> I mentioned these victims' rights. Yes. <laughs> And as a victim, I myself could give all the documentation to the International Criminal Court. Yes. 
and say, well, I informed the police department that my civil rights are being violated, but they won't enforce the civil rights because <laughs> they know that they won't get paid if they actually remove the court order. And <laughs> I informed the sheriff that the dissolution of marriage was in violation of my right to have actual due process before court hearings, but <laughs> sheriff won't enforce the laws. <laughs> and then I informed the state legislature that the laws of the state of Washington are not being enforced and they as a legislature thought that they could not be tried in the International Criminal Court. <laughs> then I informed the Department of Justice that it's a violation of the VAWA to not protect the due process rights of the respondent. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you can't have personal or subject matter jurisdiction for the uh, enforcement of the protection order unless the petitioner signs it. Yes. And then I informed the President of the United States, how are you today? It's Paul. Listen, could you find out if the United States government is holding any property that belongs to me? I thought my grandfather had uh, actually dug a well in Yuma, Arizona, there near a military base. Pooch, have you been using my water for the last 25 years? <laughs> I remember when my grandfather died, it really upset my father because he wasn't informed of the death. Yes, yes, yes. It seemed that Alton Cheney was representing the estate at that time, and a half-brother of my father, Paul Douglas Budnick, had showed up. Pooch! Now, I was an adult at that time, and I probably could have handled having that kind of wealth, considering the water in the south half of the United States. <laughs> and I just, I just wanted to know, okay? <laughs> Is there anybody in the federal government that knows? <laughs>